Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we talk about all things photography. It's free and it's available anywhere podcasts are available. Today we're talking about how I lost money doing photo shoots. I've made so many mistakes. I was ill-prepared. I'm sure all of you have made some of these mistakes too, but I mainly just wanted to share these, first of all, because the stories are pretty funny, and second, second of all, I don't want you to make the same mistakes and lose money the way that I did. Let's just prevent that from happening. Yeah, if you're a nice person, you're gonna get screwed over by customers at some point, so we're not gonna make you not nice, but hopefully you won't make the same nice guy mistakes that we've made. I'm not nice, I'm just foolish. But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning designer templates, 24-7 customer support, and it's so easy. If you can drag and drop, you can make your very own Squarespace website. So go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks, Squarespace. First up, the we'll work it out later thing. I actually made this mistake. A client needed us to go and shoot their restaurant. And it was a high-end restaurant. I assumed money wouldn't be a problem at all. They said money wouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, and, and we were we were friends. And so they set up a, a date and had us show up. And I, I kept trying to figure out, like, okay, what's your budget? And they just said, you know what, we'll we'll do it. We'll figure out what it is, and then we'll just make you whole. Don't worry about it. And I said yes to this. I, I didn't work out a price ahead of time. It was the stupidest thing. I should have seen it coming. And you know how it went down? It went down exactly as you would think. <laughs> <laughs> no, Afterwards. No, it went down worse because it was just, we descended into more and more awkwardness. But it, we just kept going. Okay, so we do the whole photo shoot. We go through their pictures. We edit them. It's a big deal. It's hard. It takes a lot of time. And then I send them the bill. And they are shook. Offended. <laughs> yes, hurt. <laughs> hurt. It was a such a generous price. It was so much less than it should have been. But they were like, whoa, whoa. I, I don't remember exactly what it was. Maybe it was $1,000 because it was a big shoot with a lot of models and a lot of time and a lot of scenes and a lot of editing. And they came back to us and like, Wh I, th I thought this was going to be like $100. Like they were not close on the price. It came in an order of magnitude more than they expected. Yeah, it was like two photographers shooting like eight models all day. Um, plus like a couple of days of post. Yeah. And they came back and wanted to pay like a tenth of that suggestion. And it was, it was my fault for not working out a price ahead of time. I don't know why I thought friends could work something out. You can't do that. We ended up meeting in the middle somewhere closer to their price than mine. And then they ended up paying most of that in free food at the restaurant. And we actually went. And it was so awkward. At the end of meals, we'd have to be like, no, this meal's free because we're bad negotiators. <laughs> <laughs> and we did it. Yeah, we kept going back. And you know it. what? The food was great. The food was good. No regrets. I mean, definitely many, many regrets. But. <laughs> yeah, you don't mean that at all. <laughs> so just get a price. Like, of course, get a price ahead of time. Yeah, you, you need to prepare. Um, and yeah, we'll get into that. Another thing you may have told yourself is that you don't want to scare them off. I know I've done that early on when I was just starting to get people asking me to take their pictures. I was like really excited and I really needed the experience. And um, money. And the money. And I didn't want to scare them off with a price. And I would even kind of figure out the math, how long it was going to take me. And I'd think, oh gosh, if I tell them that this is going to be $400, they're probably going to say no. Or what if I offend them? Or And I'd be so nervous that I would come in way too low, way too low. And oftentimes they'd still think it was expensive. And the mistake that I made was much like the restaurant situation where I just wasn't preparing enough. I was really excited about the photography element and I wasn't thinking about the business side of things because I was just so eager and I was so excited. I wasn't helping out future Chelsea because I was just too in the moment. So if I had to go, if I had to go back, this is what I 
do, you want to make sure that you're upfront about everything. You offer different packages at different rates. You can have uh, a premium package. You want it all prepared before someone even asks you. A basic package, and that way you can say, these are the services I offer. And you tell people in detail what they're getting because you want to show them your value. It's just like if someone comes to your house and quotes you on building a deck or something. They're going to tell you, these are my materials. This is the labor. This is what I charge per hour. This is how long I expect it to take. And suddenly your customer is understanding where their money is going a little bit better. So you're educating your customer. You're letting them know that these prices are already set. You're not just throwing something out there so they feel more confident. And you're also helping yourself by not undervaluing your work and not making any money by charging too little. The worst thing that can happen if you lowball, lowball somebody is that they will be very happy with your work and they will go tell all your friends that they did that you did this awesome portrait shoot for $30. Yeah. Because then you'll get a bunch of other people being like, oh hey, I heard you do portrait shoots for $30. If you decide to give somebody a great price, tell them that they can't tell anybody else your price. Because otherwise, that will become your de facto price. And when you actually tell the next person you're going to charge them a fair amount, they're going to be offended. Like, whoa, you're, you want to charge me like five whoa. times more than you whoa. charged Eddie? Whoa. I thought I could just give you a free meal. Aren't you those hungry Northrop people? <laughs> That's the <laughs> reputation you build. Oh, oh another lie. Yeah, the, mm, this won't take long. And sometimes the client tells you that. And sometimes you tell yourself that. The client can come to you and say, oh, I just need a couple of shots. Really, just grab your camera. We'll be done in three minutes. Uh, and sometimes you'll think the client will spec out, oh, I need just a family shoot. And you will greatly underestimate the amount of time it takes. And I hate to be sexist here, but every guy I've ever known has been terrible at estimating the time anything will take. Like if you ask a guy, oh, how long does it take to uh, drive into the city? He's going to give you a time that's about 60% mm, of the actual time. The guy, I think men were just optimistic about things. We always remember the best possible case scenario. We remember that time when there was absolutely no traffic going into the city, even though there's always traffic going into the city. This is getting very specific. <laughs> and if we're thinking about editing photos, we remember the time where we just smoothly culled through everything and did a couple of quick edits and got it right back to the client. We don't remember the worst time or even the average time. So you need to be more disciplined. You need to actually track the time that it takes you to do every step of the process. This starts with pre-sales talking to the client. You need to log that it, you spent half an hour going back and forth in emails because that time is valuable and you have to recoup that. You also have to factor in pre-sales that didn't work out because yeah, you're going to have to talk to five people before you book one gig and that one person needs to pay for the other four that didn't actually sign up because that's how pre-sales work. You have to cover that time. You have to cover the time it takes you to get your gear ready, to get your batteries charged, to clear out your memory cards, to make sure that all your flashes are in place, to load everything into your car, the light stands, the sandbags, and then to reverse that whole process to put everything away. There's all these little things that we don't factor in, but even if you just think about your time on charging by an hourly basis, it takes more hours than you're inclined to remember. You have to think of the time that it takes you after the sale going back and forth with the client as they want one extra print or they have little questions or little updates. So if you tell yourself this won't take long, it probably will and it's probably because you're not properly accounting for everything. You also don't want that tension of expecting it to not take very long and then being frustrated with your client thinking, oh, I thought I'd just quickly do this and, and now they want so much more. Now these photos are taking so long to edit. You want to offer a quality product so pitch it that way. If someone says, just do it real quick, just do it real cheap, you can say, I don't do cheap work. I do my best every time and I deliver a quality product. That's not me. I'm not going to do it cheap. And I, and I think that you end up gaining respect in the long run and being able to charge more if you're the person that, you know, never, uh, always has a backup camera, you know, never forgets to charge things, shows up with the appropriate equipment, has everything prepared that's going to have value for your brand in the long run.
Let's take a minute and thank our sponsor, Squarespace. If you need any type of website, especially a photography portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. They make it really easy for you. They will make a beautiful website for you that works on mobile devices or desktops, and you can view fantastic analytics that will actually help you build your business by determining what types of people are visiting your website, what sorts of search terms that they're using, and what sorts of devices, mobile or desktop, that they're using. You need to kind of refine your demographics and know who is visiting the site. If you yeah, want to check speak, it out. Actually, speaking of building a quality brand, to be able to send someone to a beautiful website, like your Squarespace website, for them to see your pictures looking clean and professional, to be able to send them to a site where you have packages laid out, this is how many pictures you get, this is how many edited photos, this is how many prints, to have everything like that beautifully set up, someone goes there and they're already feeling better about spending money on you. They know you've invested time already. They see you as a professional and they see you as someone that's prepared. That's so much better than just shooting back an email and saying $300 and not having anything prepared. With a website, like a Squarespace website, you can do that simply. You can set it up in a day and you can do it for free to try it out. You get a free 14 day trial, no credit cards needed. You don't have to put your credit card in and then remember to cancel. You just get it for free. So go to squarespace.com slash Tony. You can try it out. And if you decide to buy it, use the coupon code Tony and you get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. So we're talking about how we lost money doing photo shoots, our mistakes, our poor negotiations, and how you can avoid them so that you don't do the same thing. You don't have to lose your money. We did it for you. And now we're talking about another lie that we've told ourselves, the exposure will be great. I know all of you have had someone say this to you. Can you do it for exposure? Take photos at my restaurant. The exposure will be great. Take the senior portrait of my kid for free. The exposure will be great. I'll tell all of my friends. And that might be true, and I think that we're inclined to want to say yes because, you know, like early years Chelsea, you're excited to take the pictures, you really want to do it. But I think that it really helps to just take some time, take a moment, assess if this is actually an opportunity for you. Do you really want to go into restaurant photography? Is that actually an opportunity or is that you just doing work for free? How much would this actually make you? What kind of exposure will you get? Is it even from the market that could benefit you? Are they sharing it, for example, on their Instagram in Washington and you live in Florida and it's really not even gonna help you? So just be more intelligent about making those exposure choices. Of course, there are opportunities where the exposure is great, but in my experience, a lot of them have not been fruitful and it's because I didn't think through uh, whether or not I would even need exposure from the particular person. Um, like put it in writing and get specifics. Yeah. If you have a contract, you should have a contract, put it in there that they will tell some number of people that they will tag you on Instagram. Because once you give them the pictures, most of the time you will not get anything else out of that person. No matter how trivial it may seem for them to complete their part of the barter, they will often just let you down. Yeah, or say, you know, I really don't have time. I've had people do that where I they offer me something in return and then they're kind of like, well, I can't do that. That would cost me money. So people don't like giving up free stuff. So it is a good idea to have them agree in a contract ahead of time. It's also just a good idea to assess if you could get that kind of exposure on your own. Like I've had people say, can you do a portrait of me? It would be free exposure. And I've realized, well, I could actually just get like a real model for like $30 and my pictures would be a lot better and I could pretend it's a senior portrait. So. Just assess your options as well. I remember we agreed to do a free family photo shoot for somebody because we needed pictures for our portfolio. And what we needed, we were specific about it, was we need the parents and the kids there. And they just wanted pictures of the kids. But we said, okay, we'll get some pictures of your kids and we'll get everybody together for our portfolio. And they show up and the parents are just wearing like gym clothes. It was just one of the parents showed up. The other parent did not want to do it, so they just ditched us. And then the other parent showed up in gym clothes and said, I'm not doing it. We should have just walked, but we were really nice and we just did it anyway and got nothing in return. We, yeah, that's the thing. We've been too nice too many times. And that's going to happen to a lot of people because it's really awkward at the time when the kids show up and the parent is there and they're not ready and you can't say, okay, we're not doing the shoot then because this was our deal and you didn't fulfill your part of the bargain. You have to be ready to walk if, if they're not fulfilling their part of the barter. And if you take them on their word that they will catch up later, they probably won't. 
because people don't. Once they get what they want, <laughs> they're done with the transaction. We're done doing work for exposures, uh, and I still do work for free for friends and family sometimes. It still happens a lot. Because what am I going to do? Like, honestly, guys, not to be a total B word, but I, what am I going to do? Charge someone like $4,000? What it actually costs? Would cost me for me and Tony, like, for three days to work on something? So I still, I still do it for free because I'm an idiot still. This is the worst, my least favorite thing. And I would say this happens 80% of the time on a shoot. If you are a business person, you've heard the term scope creep before, where you agree to something and then it's just like, oh, just one more little thing. And it's called scope creep because it's not a huge leap. It's just like, it seems like such a small little additional favor that they're asking as long as they're there. But these things add up and sometimes they can end up being a big deal. This has happened to me a lot of times, but maybe my worst story is that we had a client come in for uh, a professional business portrait. We were going to do it in the studio on a backdrop. Everything was set up. It was very simple. The lights were ready. We had a contract and everything. It was like everything was written out professional. Yeah, it should have been a 10 minute thing. They brought their dog. Their dying dog. Their dying 140 pound dog. I didn't weigh it, but it was really big. Yeah. And here's the thing. Our studio is on the second floor. And so the dog couldn't get upstairs to the studio. We were not expecting this dog, but they wanted their pictures with their dog because it would make them more personable. So this now this gig is now completely different. So we had to bring everything from the studio downstairs to the lower level and then shoot it in our kitchen. Well, it creeped kind of like, oh, I've got this dying dog and I don't know how much longer he's going to last and he's in the car. Can we just get one picture with my dying dog? And you're like... Okay, and then the dog comes in and the dog tries to do the stairs and like he can't do stairs He is a very Dying dog and you can't be like all right, then the whole thing's off. So then you're just like, okay <laughs> oh, But then what? having the dog in the shoot became a big deal because dogs are messy and they, you don't want it to look messy in the photo But you then you're in there in Photoshop trying to clean stuff up and we had to shoot it in our kitchen against some blinds Instead of our seamless white backdrop So then we we're photoshopping the blinds and ended up growing up It's so much in scope that we just lost a whole bunch of money on the deal Another I story. I'm literally sweating just thinking about it because it was so stressful. It's like, oh Why did you do this? <laughs> the other thing that tends to happen is they bring something uh, like inanimate along like oh, okay. We'll take pictures of your kid. Here's the price uh, Little Johnny loves to play the violin. So could we get some shots of him with the violin also and then um, Let's separate the violin. We also could use some shots of just the violin and everything seems like we're one selling little... it on eBay later That didn't yes. happen, but it's funny. It's uh, really funny. <laughs> so it's always this one little incremental thing but you have to be ready to just say no and ahead of time, you prepare them by saying, if you're going to bring anything extra, tell me ahead of time because it might involve changes to the price and I don't want any kind of surprises. So a lot of people will have an uh, add-on for people because I have had people try to join the shoot, so I'll be very specific now. One person for 20 minutes because sometimes they say, oh, they look so cute. We don't have any pictures together. Can I be in the picture? And then, of course, it takes more time for posing. It really does change the shoot a lot. They don't realize it. They're not photographers. It's on us. These have been our stupid mistakes. You have to be prepared. Anything that they could possibly add, they're going to try. I've had people bring in uh, sentimental clothing and blankets, and suddenly the lighting has to change, and it, it just throws you off. So yeah, in yeah. the case of a violin, it wasn't lit properly because it was set up for portraits, and you needed like a little bit of reflection off of yeah. it if it was going to look good at all, so then you're bringing in extra lights and moving things around, but you can't screw up the portrait lighting at the same time. It is just more work. To, to the client, they just think, I'll just hold this up. Yeah. But as the photographer, you know, okay, there's actually quite a bit more in there. And then you take the photo and you look at the violin and you realize there's like little bits of dust and lint all over it, and it just generally looks crappy, so then you're in there with the clone tool. Do, 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 do. And you have pictures of them without the violin and with the violin. So now you're calling and editing more photos. Don't underestimate this stuff. Wow, Tony, we are massive screw ups. Yeah, How have we made it feelings. so far? <laughs> <laughs> We've lost a lot of money from being suckers. Yeah, I like to say generous. I would love to hear 
your sucker stories, the times when you gave away too much, the times when you underpriced something, the times you let somebody run all over you. <laughs> Tell me in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to the Picture This podcast using your favorite podcasting app. It's great to listen to when you're driving, working out, or editing photos. If you like to see your photos in a beautiful format, if you want a website to show your clients when you're booking them and you want pages to send them to for pricing, try a free Squarespace website. You can get it for 14 days free, no credit card needed. They have beautiful designer templates, 24 seven customer support. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own Squarespace portfolio. So go to squarespace.com Tony and use the coupon code Tony to get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. Thanks.